Hi, uh, this video is on gravitational and electric fields um, and potential and potential energy. Um, so far in the previous videos, we looked at uh, gravitational fields and electric fields, and we saw the, the following similarities and differences. So we know that the gravitational force is given by gmm over r squared, and the electric force is given by kqq over r squared. Uh, we know that gravitational force is always attractive, um, but the electric force can be attractive or repulsive. Um, we also saw that the gravitational field strength uh, is the force per unit mass, and the electric field strength is the force per unit charge. Um, and therefore, we can uh, combine the, the top equation and the second equation and say that the gravitational field strength is gm over r squared and the electric field strength um, here is kq over r squared. Okay, so that's what we saw in all of our previous um, videos. Now, the other thing that we defined was potential energy. Uh, I'm going to define that again here. I'm going to see if I can leave those equations up there. So the potential energy, uh, which we say is, uh, whoops, we say um, is the work done bringing a point mass or a positive point charge for electric um, from infinity to that point. Um, that point in a field. So uh, that's what the potential energy is. Um, and that's the potential energy of an actual object. Um, so it's the work done bringing a point mass. You'll notice it's not a unit mass, it's a point mass. So it's something that has mass, it's an actual object. It's a point mass. Uh, and the reason that we say point is because we assume that it has zero volume. Volume can volume and density can slightly distort things. So we assume everything has a uh, a mass that is entirely concentrated in the center of that object. So the work done bringing a point mass or a positive point charge from infinity to that point. So the point mass is obviously for gravitational potential energy and the positive point charge is for electric potential energy. So uh, if that's the potential energy, then we also know um, from previous studies of potential energy that uh, the potential energy um, at a particular point in a gravitational field um, is given by mgh, um, and that's the potential energy at a point h where the gravitational field is g. Um, now we can apply our, our g from up here into that, because we know that that's the equation for g at any point at a radius r from mass m. Uh, so we can say that the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy here is the mass times g, which is gm over r squared, times h, which in this case is the distance from the center, which we can call r. Um, and then obviously the r's cancel there, so we can simplify that and say that ep is gm m over r. So that's a different equation for potential energy of an object of mass little m. Um, and uh, it gives us a, a slightly more complete definition because this is assuming that g is constant, um, whereas this is saying that you can you can apply that at any radius r from uh, the center of any other mass. Um, now we can also say that the uh, the potential, now not the potential energy, the potential, um, which is the work done bringing a point unit mass. From infinity to that point. Remember that's if you don't have another mass, we're just talking about theoretical potential at any point. So the work done bringing a point unit mass, which is basically um, the the work done per unit mass. So it's exactly the same as this, except it's per unit mass. So the gravitational potential um, at a point in a gravitational field is g m m over r per unit mass. Uh, which is just g m over r. 
So we now have two different equations. We have an equation for potential energy. We have a, an equation for potential. And the potential energy is if you have an actual object of mass m in that, in that field. Uh, it, has a, it has an actual amount of potential energy. Uh, the potential at a point is how much energy uh, something of unit mass would have at that point in a gravitational field. So there's two different equations there, one for potential energy and one for potential. They're very similar, but they both um, uh, derive from the same root. Um, finally, we, uh, we also know that uh, if we take that definition for potential and we say, well, we know that the gravitational field strength is G m over R squared, then we can say that the gravitational field strength can also be given by the change in potential, which is G m over R, divided by the change in radius, or the rate of change with radius, not with time, the rate of change with radius, of the potential. So a common exam question like this might be something like if you have a, uh, a radius potential graph, and a radius potential graph will look something like that, then if you take the gradient at any point, let's say radius x here, distance x from the center, if you take the gradient at that point of that graph, then the gradient of your graph, m, is going to equal the gravitational field strength at that point there. So you can take the gradient of any point of this curve, and that's going to give you the gravitational field strength at that point, at that radius.